Let's dig into the grid system just a little bit more and create a slightly more nuanced responsive layout. Let's say that beneath the main content area of our page, this whole row rather, that we've created, let's say beneath all that, we wanna have four little info boxes with kind of like some promotional information, some, some real buzzwordy type marketing stuff. We're gonna start off just the same way we created our main body in our sidebar. So open up your index.html file. Make sure you're in the right place. We wanna be in between the closing tag for our row div and the closing tag for our container div. So right here, let's add a new row. This is a new row because it's a whole other level of the page. So if this is one row, then beneath it will be another row. So we'll start off with a div with the class row. Go ahead and go down and close that. And then inside this row, again, we want four little areas four columns in Bootstrap's grid system language. So for now, we'll just do div and then close div. And we'll do that four times. And in each of these, let's put an H3 header. And we'll use some real buzzwordy stuff. Innovate, sustain, lead, and and inspire. Now we'll also go and put a small paragraph beneath each one of these. So you can go ahead and open and close your paragraph tag. I'll go back to blindtextgenerator.com, grab maybe two or three sentences of text, paste that in, and I'm just gonna use the same thing for each of these, just to keep things simple so we don't have to spend too much time copying and pasting stuff. So now inside this new row div, you should have four additional divs, each containing an H3 header with some word and a paragraph right beneath that with a couple sentences of text. Make sure that all looks right. Save it. Go back to your site and refresh and it'll look like this, that's fine. We haven't created our columns yet. Make sure this is how it looks. And if it does, then go back to your index.html file and we'll start adding our classes. So let's start off just like we did before. In the first div beneath row, again, we want these to be going all across the page, all four on desktop monitors, so medium and large. So to do that, we add the class call dash md dash one fourth of 12, which is three. Again, it's a 12 column layout. We want four of equal size. So these are gonna each span three of those columns. And we don't have to add call large three as well, because keep in mind, if we don't specify the large column or the columns for large screens, then this defines everything, including medium and up. So we only have to do this for the smallest one that we want here. So we want everything below a medium sized screen to act differently. And we want medium and up to be three columns each. So we need to go add this for each of these divs. Class call MD3. Class call MD3 and class call md3. Okay, save that. Go back to your site, refresh, make sure it looks like this. That's starting to look pretty good, but we haven't done anything new yet. We we'll wanna test this out just to make sure it's working so we can make our browser smaller. And we see once it goes beneath a medium desktop screen size, this would be considered tablet size, everything takes up the full width, just like it did before. But we're gonna do something a little bit different this time. Let's say that when the screen is smaller, when we're viewing this on a mobile phone or on a tablet, 
Instead of each of these elements taking up the full width of the screen, we want them to take up half of the screen. So we would see innovate and sustain on one line, and then beneath that we would see lead and inspire. We're going to keep our main content and our sidebar acting just the same as they are, with each one taking up the full width of the screen, but on these smaller screens, since these are really small pieces of content, they can each take up half the width of the screen. We can have two side by side. To do that, we simply add another class to each of these divs. So again, we want this to be extra small and small. So we only have to specify the extra small size because that'll go up and include small as well. And then since we've also defined medium separately, that will take over at that point and override the settings for extra small and set the settings for medium and large. So we're gonna add another class, call XX, XS rather, for extra small. Six, because we want this to take up half the screen with 12 columns, half of that is six. We want this to take up six columns. We need to add these for the rest of them. Call excess six. Call excess six. And call excess six. So we have two classes defining different types of behavior for different screen sizes. Make sure you save. Go back to your website once again. Refresh. Notice you won't see any changes yet because we didn't change the way it works on a medium or large screen. But once we start making it smaller, let's see what happens then. Here we go. This will be considered a medium or tablet sized screen. If we went really small, if we go really small, we'll see it stays that way for mobile size screen. We have these little promotional kind of buzzwordy blocks side by side. This one takes up six columns, six of the 12 columns on a medium sized screen or, or a small rather. This one takes up six columns as well. And then those fill up the full 12. So it goes down to the next line with the other two. So you can add however many classes you want here. You can change the behavior for any of the four different screen sizes. You could have different behavior for all four screen sizes if you wanted to. That might get a little bit out of hand at points if you had a different layout for each of the four screen sizes, but it is an option. So keep in mind that when you're establishing the responsiveness for your site, you don't have to have mobile size screens or small size screens always go the full width of the site. You can have them respond differently, but still take up only a portion of the screen. In this case, when it's small or extra small, it only takes up half of the screen width. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel right now before you do anything else. Click on the subscribe button. We also want to hear from you. Do you have any questions? Leave a comment below this video. We try to answer every question.